Tonight, majority in parliament tears into the minority caucus over what they describe as fear-mongering, scaring businesses away with their petty demand for parliamentary approval of every government contract. It is important to remind our colleagues that they ought not make parliament a busybody, nosing for things that are not part of the mandate of parliament. Our job as parliament is provided for in the constitution. Details as the majority dismiss accusations of constitutional breaches in the award of contract, including the controversial SML deal. And the reference or the quest contract in question must be an international transaction. That is where our colleagues should pay attention. To. It does not mean that every contract with a multi-year value should come to parliament. So they should stop misleading the public. They should stop spreading falsehood. We'll hear from the minority side of the house here yeah, on Top Story. Now, ma the majority in parliament is tonight tearing into the minority counterparts over what they describe as fear-mongering in their demand for parliamentary approval of every government contract. The minority has, in the last few weeks, taken government on for signing various contracts, including the recent 5G service deal with Next Gen Infranco. The minority contends that some of these sole source deals must be subjected to parliamentary approval by the majority leader, Alexander Felmarking, at a press news conference today in parliament, says the nature of the deals do not breach any constitutional provision and does not demand any approval from parliament. Without prejudice to the general powers of parliament to oversight, it is important to remind our colleagues that they ought not make parliament a busybody, nosing for things that are not part of the mandate of parliament. Our job as parliament is provided for in the constitution. And I would urge our friends in the NDC that by that act, they are obstructing government business. By that act, they are scaring investors, and that affects the economy. For the avoidance of doubt, let me quote the law they rely on rather mischievously for their political purpose. Act 921, Section 33, it provides. A covered entity shall not enter into any agreement with a financial commitment that binds a government for more than one financial year or that results in a contingent liability except where the financial commitment or the contingent liability A is with a prior written approval of the minister and B authorized by parliament in accordance with Article 181 of the Constitution. So, the question is, what does Article 181 say? Now, for this purpose, the relevant uh, sub-clause of Article 181 is Clause 5, which provides that this article shall, with the necessary modification by Parliament, apply to an international business or economic transaction to which government is a party as it applies to a law. So, the contract and the reference or the quest contract in question must be an international transaction. That is where our colleagues should pay attention to. It does not mean that every contract with a multi-year value should come to Parliament. So, they should stop misleading the public. They should stop spreading falsehood.
So that's uh, the majority leader, Alexander Afeo, marking there. Now, uh, my colleague, uh, James Averji, was in Parliament monitoring the proceedings there and has joined me live in studio with more details. James, there have been a number of deals in, in, in question. Is the major majority clear on which particular one they have concerns with? So, Brace, uh, if you, uh, the minority in the past few days, as we said, took uh, the government own, they have uh, listed some few deals, including the SML deal, the um, 5G services, as well as the others. And so, when the majority leader addresses the press, uh, he did not mention any of the deals categorically. And so, he just uh, spoke to the issue about how they are taking on and all of that. And then, the curiosity was which of the specific deals are in question. He would not speak specifically to any of them, but he made example of the SML deal. Uh, he was of the view that the SML uh, was uh, is actually a, a fully uh, uh, domestic uh, uh, owned company, a fully Ghanaian owned company. And so per those provisions that he has read, he does not think that the SML deal needed to be brought to parliament. And so uh, he made an example of that. And then there was the question of the uh, the new deal, which is the uh, 5G deal that government has uh, uh, signed with Infranco. We were told by the mi Minister of uh, Communication, Nesla Osu, that this was a, a special government uh, uh, purpose vehicle, mm. which was SPV. used, SPV, which was used to set up, to give the deal to this very particular campaign. And so he's been touching on those two that in his view, he does not think that these two deals needed to be brought to parliament for any attention. Very general. They were general that the government agencies were signing contract with businesses. My point here is that you cannot get up and generalize it. Let me give you an example of the GRA SML contract, for instance. SML is a Ghanaian company a wholly owned Ghanaian company registered in Ghana. And it was their demand that the SML contract should have come to parliament because it's a multi-year contract. Our argument is that that is wrong. Because if you read the act, which act refers to the Article 181 of the Constitution. Now, the Article 181 has various subclauses. So it is for them to pay attention to the aspects of the, of, the, of the law that will require parliamentary approval. And I'm saying that 1815 talks about an international commercial transaction. So local contracts or MOUs or agreements of multi-year value but are local cannot be come under the anticipation of Article 1815. But they are just throwing it in, confusing people. All right? And for me, as a businessman, I know the effect of said pronouncement on business and the economy. Some of their pronouncements affecting industry and with the greatest respect, I am here to see the contract. So I would want to respect the contracts and the terms of it. We are going to meet the ministers, and I'm sure that we'll have an opportunity to see the contract. When I see the contract, and it is a local contract, it's a contract between government of Ghana and a Ghanaian company to be executed locally, it is not an international transaction, then straight away, I would, I, would, I would speak to it. But I'm not, I won't be surprised that, again, it's part of the NDC uh, minority's uh, agenda to throw dust into the eyes of Ghanaian people. But let's wait and see. I'm sure we'll be able to address it when the time comes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate your time. So, Ave, you're still here with me in the studio. Now, the majority leader has also talked about the implication of the minority's action. Ave, what exactly was he saying? Yes, Brace. So, uh, since last week when this issue came up, he mm. was on pause as well and he talks about the fact that 
and how economies are going around the world and Ghana's economy, a lot of businesses, especially the international businesses, are looking up to Ghana uh, to uh, look at how things are going, surveying the Ghanaian uh, 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 terrain to know what things, the political uh, mm. uh, stability and all of that. And so some of this comment by the NDC, which he terms as falsehood, that are going out that could have dire implication on the uh, government's partnership with some of these international industries and businesses working here in Ghana. Basically, they are not going to give up their best. People will keep their money, and that would affect the good people of Ghana. Every government engages the private sector. The object of that is to create space for economic growth. So if you recklessly scare of the, the, the businessmen and where you know that what you are putting out is not true, what you are trying to do is to sabotage the economy. So I would want to encourage them that yes, we know it's an election year, but let's argue on facts. Let's put out the facts. They have been in power before. They were in office for eight years. There were things that they could not do. The very things they said they could not do, we have come into office and we've done them. So that is the majority leader, Alexander Afayo, marking there. So that news conference happened in Parliament this afternoon. I mean, what, what, else, what else was said there, really, that, that helps this discussion? The, uh, Brace, there was also the issue about the CD depreciation. Mm -hmm. We know that the Ghana CD has been dwindling uh, uh, against the major currencies. Today, we are learning that it's around 15 cities and some pesos. The majority leader was of the view that uh, some of this can also be attributed in mm -hmm. his view to the minority who are uh, mongering fear uh, wow. uh, that... Uh, businesses uh, the government performance and businesses uh, in fact their position on the issue the fear mongering mm -hmm. is making businesses and businessmen go to exchange their cities for more dollar which is affecting them when the uh, cd actually appreciate against the dollar they intend lose uh, the value of their money in urging the businesses to not fall for some of these things mm. and to keep their cities at this because government is working pretty hard to get the city uh, to back to appreciation against the major currencies So this is Top Story, always brought to you by Telitel, connecting the energies. Let's go on the phone lines now and get some education into what the law says about, you know, doing such kind of contract. Richmond, Roxon is a private legal practitioner and joins us on the phone lines now. Roxon, I'm grateful for joining. What does the law say or what is the position of the law on such contract that has to go to Parliament for approval? Good evening, Bruce. Sorry, good evening, good evening, good evening, listening. So when it comes to contract and parliamentary approval, we look at it from two angles. We look at the constitution, the amendment of the constitution, particularly after 181, which we, we deals with parliamentary approval of international transactions. And then you also look at the Public Financial Management Act of 2016. The Public Financial Management Act of 2016, specifically under section and the section 33 is clear that when once there's an agreement that's gone beyond one year, it should be able to go to parliament or parliamentary approval. So any agreement or any transaction of that nature that goes beyond one year will definitely have to go through parliamentary approval. Also, when you look at the 1815, any transaction of international nature, must also have parliamentary approval. I see. But, 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 so when it's a local company engaged in business or engaged by government to do a contract, does that also fall within the remit of the provision of the law that that contract, whether it's a multi-year or not, should go to parliament? 
it was the entry. It's entering into an agreement that banned the government of China financially for more than one year, whether it's local or whether it's international. Yeah, the Public Financial Management Act, you are supposed to go to Parliament or Parliament. So it wouldn't matter in this instance whether it's a year or it's a, whether it's, if it's less than a year, whether it's local or international, then you can make the distinction. But because it's less than a year and you're not binding that made for more than a year, since you don't need parliamentary approval, it is local. If it's international, whether it's less than a year or it's more than a year, you need parliamentary approval and Article 1815. Once you seek to bind, whether the entity is entering into the, uh, the contract, the binding government for more than one year, whether it's a local entity or a foreign entity, well, well, aren't there, you know, some provisions elsewhere in the law that says if government is under pressure to provide a solution to a problem, it could go without parliamentary approval? When you look at the Act, the Act does not. In fact, if we uh, just to me, if you have time to read, that multi-year expenditure commitment, uh, it says, a private entity shall not enter into any agreement with the financial commitment that binds the government for more than one year or one financial year. Hello, Nelson. I, you, yes. I'm grateful for the education, but it, it looks like there is, uh, you know, some echo of a sort from, from your background. No, can you hear me now? Yes, clearly. Yes, it's better. So, yes, as I was saying, under Article 30, sorry, Section 33 of the Public Financial Management Act, it's clear that a private entity shall not enter into any agreement with a financial commitment that binds the government for more than one year or that results in a contingent liability except where the financial commitment or contingent liability is with the priority and approval of the minister and authorized by parliament in accordance with what has been one each one. So the law does not give room for uh, entities to maneuver this. Once you are committing government for more than one year, whether you're a local entity or foreign entity, you need to go to parliament. Interesting education there. Stay with me. Let me bring in the um, uh, uh, Roxy Nelson Dafemapo, who is a minority member of parliament representing the people of South Dai. He joins us on the telephone lines now. Grateful to you. Uh, now, let's start off with this. What specific contract do you have issues with? Now, the, our issue, we've had problems with a lot of government transactions, but specifically we speak of the current um, arrangement between the Ministry of Communications and the, the private entity called Next Gen in Fraco. Like the, the, the immediate previous speaker said, in clear violation of Section 33 of the TFM Act at 921 2016, the nature and character of this agreement ought to have come to Parliament. But they sidestep that parliamentary um, um, procedure to proceed with the arrangement. If you read the minister's own statement, you, you discover from the statement that the whole, the whole arrangement received executive approval. Anytime this government wants to sidestep a parliamentary requirement, then they will go by executive approval, which means that they don't even discuss it at cabinet. So, and it's something we must critically take a look at. A lot of the things this government has done is by executive approval. But we are, we are insisting that this one it has to be complied with. Section 33, in consonance with Article 181 of the Constitution, will have to be complied with. But, but, but that's we have the, that, that, hold that, on, hold on. Okay. We have said that mm -hmm. saying that mm -hmm. the value, the value for money, that is the true value of this transaction, is in excess of a billion. But as a people, we could have obtained up to about 500 million up front if the proper auction and, 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 and value of the processes were done. There's no competition. They've taken away the competition. And handed, the, and handed the value of the transaction to only one entity. That, for me, exists only on paper. It's a shell company. A company that exhibits no track record in this area. So, in these circumstances, we are making certain demands. 
And it's therefore preposterous for members of this government to say that we are harassing foreign entities who intend to do business in Ghana. We have laws that ought to be complied with. The country is not a sole proprietorship. Even, even as a sole proprietorship, you have to govern the sole proprietorship in, in, in accordance with the, with the sole proprietorship arrangement. So we, won't, we will not allow it. We will, we will continue to, 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 to check this government to respect the laws of this country. Nobody has gone to court to frustrate government business when, than, than these people when they were in opposition. So, so when we when 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 they are in government now, and we are checkmating every single transaction that they they conduct in flagrant breach of our laws, I think I think the proper thing to do is to ensure that they comply with the laws and if, not to pasteurize the opposition. Mm, if they had opened the process to multiple entities to bid, would there still have been an issue for for you to say you are sidestepping the law? One that will be in, that will be in compliance with with uh, with uh, procurement laws. Act sixty three, as amended by Act um, uh, uh, nine one four, that would have been in compliance with the law. Two, that would have been a value for money. Indeed, in Act in, in Act nine hundred and twenty one, there's a provision that insists on value for money. We have just put out a statement that up front. Instead of the $120 million, $28 million we are supposed to get in 10 years from this transaction, we could have gotten up front of about $500 million. And that should be of concern to every, 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 every well-meaning Ghanaian. So, so, so it means that if they had opened it up, you would not have had an issue with whether or not it came to Parliament or not. I want, I, no, I, I want but, to clarify. But the parliamentary requirement will have to be met. Because opening it up is part of the process and the procurement law that we are asking for. And then two, once we are once the arrangement is, is multi year, that is it, as the requirement in, in section thirty three of the PFM as parliamentary approval will have to be sought. How is that difficult for this government to do? How suddenly is it that bringing bringing an agreement of this nature in compliance with section thirty three for parliament to look at it? And give you the go ahead. It's suddenly a very tall, difficult matter for this government to do. I don't get it. Except so, so, so how do you how do you then react to the ma majority uh, concerns? And and this majority is also made up of people who are like you are, are, are yeah. lawyers. Now they believe yeah. that this company is not an international company. It is not an international transaction, and therefore okay. cannot come to parliament. Okay, it, we we are not saying that it is an international company. That is a totally a totally erroneous argument to make. We are saying that you have decided to, to, to structure the agreement in such a way that it has a 10-year tenor. We didn't do that. The government itself did it. That is why we are calling the agreement a work and pay agreement. So once you, you've done that in that manner, then the requirements under Section 33 will have to be complied with. So it is, it is perhaps their, their incompetence that is creating the problems for them. Nobody asked them to create a multi-year contract. If you do that, 33 say, then bring it to parliament. Mm. Now, for, for the benefit of this country, must the focus be on the competence of an entity to provide a solution to, for the country or whether or not the government is sidestepping you know, the lay-down rules? Both are very important. That one... A company that we are asking to provide a, a, such a such a highly sensitive service of that nature and of and of and of such highly technical nature, the entity that has been selected ought to have a track record. That would have that would have been, been the appropriate thing to do. Two, any such transaction must be in compliance with our laws. Why do we enact laws? Why does this government sponsor bills and bring bring the bills to parliament? For us to spend parliamentary time and hour and resources to enact them into law. It is because there's something we call regulatory regime that is supposed to govern transactions. So when you are arranging a transaction of this nature and our laws are supposed to be complied with and you flaw the laws, with all due respect, are we not in court prosecuting people because they, 
their conduct breach certain provisions of our law. Mm. Okay. Now, hold the line for me. Let me bring in Richmond Ruxin, who is also a private legal practitioner. Richmond, what should be the next action to ensure that the right things are done? The next action is that the minister should ensure that contracts of this nature uh, is presented to Parliament for parliamentary approval. When you look at the PFM Act 2016, again, under Section 98, as a penalty for contravention of this Act, it acts its provision for any individual or any person who, who contravenes a provision of the Act. Failing to take such contracts to Parliament, to parliament for parliamentary approval, clearly uh, the contravention of the Act, uh, which means that uh, it's, which makes it punishable. So the minister should take steps. Unfortunately, because of uh, the nature of, of, of prosecutions when it comes to Article 88, which is done by the Attorney General, who is also a member of government, some ministers or public officials at the end of the day go spot free. But crime is perpetual. And if the minister does not want to contravene, it, moving forward, it will be appropriate that all these contracts will be presented to parliament for parliamentary approval. Is he supposed to take these ones to Parliament, even though they, they've agreed they agreed on them? Oh, yes. You have to take it to Parliament, at least for ratification. Even if uh, it's been done already, take it to Parliament for Parliament to, to approve it. If it's rejected and there are any modifications that need to be done, it will be looked at. But at this point in time, uh, in my considered opinion, uh, the minister or whoever is in charge has clearly reached Section 8, Section 33, mm -hmm of the PMF Act 2016. Okay, grateful to you for joining. Now, Roxanne Nelson, Daphne Hopo, um, this, this is the case, but the majority is also accusing you of deliberate sabotaging government's progress. I mean, why that? Why that action? Why do you want to sabotage government from, from, from progressing to provide the solutions that we need? First of all, what, what, what does that expression even mean? Any, any government action is supposed to be in compliance with our laws. So if government decides to take unlawful steps, uh, it is the duty of you and I to, to, to call them to order and, and, and insist that they conduct the affairs of state in compliance with our laws. And so if government were conducting itself lawfully, constitutionally, legally, Nobody will have, have a problem with them. For instance, like my brother said, what is so difficult about bringing this transaction to parliament for parliamentary to approval? Except, except because they are hiding something. Except because they are hiding something. Right. Roxanne Nelson, Daphne, I'm grateful to you for, for, for joining. He is a minority member of parliament representing the people of South Dai. This has been Top Story. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Up next is News Night here on Joy FM.